right, well, what are we doing today? Well, my new thermal imager arrived. And uh, for a fairly low price uh, out of China, this uh, works reasonably well. Except for one problem. It's been on charge for about six hours. And uh, it's very flat and won't charge at all. So I think we're going to open this up and do a teardown and find out what's wrong with the battery. It's also worth noting that if we have a good look down in here that the camera probably can't see, there are torque screws in there, not standard Phillips. So I'm guessing they don't want uh, people opening these, but guess what? We've got the right gear. All right, I got these screws out, these Torx tamper-proof self-tappers. And a very deep shaft in here. It's pretty obvious they didn't really want people getting into this. Now, this is falling apart in little pieces, so let's see if I can get all the pieces out the right way. As I thought, it's an 18 650 cell in here, and uh, it's probably not real healthy. And, luckily enough, it's on a little connector. So I can rip that off, and I can test the cell. So we'll get our test gear out, and uh, we'll see what voltage this is at. I'm guessing it's probably not going to be real healthy. I've got the baby meter out, and we'll select our 20 volt range which sounds strange, but that is the correct voltage range for this. And we'll check our little probes through here. Have a look, and that battery says it's 3.8 volts. That's okay, but maybe the charge circuit's not working or something. Huh. But this is actually fairly nicely packed in here. Looks like there's a probably a RAM chip there. Um, it's a bit hard to make out everything on here, but they've scrubbed off the... Uh, oh, it's wind bond. So it's probably a system on a chip, but they've scrubbed off the serial number. This and they've scrubbed off serial numbers on a couple of these other chips. This tells me this might be a knockoff of a commercial product, and they don't want people knowing that they're using the chips that they are. It happens a lot. I've got a, a laser cutter actually that's the same. I scrubbed off the serial numbers off every single chip and used a high security dongle for something that can barely cut a circle unaided. So that tells me they've probably copied some stuff. Anyway, we only really care about this battery, so we might try a different one and see what happens. Alright, so to rule out a charging circuit problem, I'm going to do a quick little test here. I'm going to charge this into charge. I'll plug it into charge, rather, with the battery connected. I'm going to go over here and have a look at what the charge circuit is doing. It reckons it's pulling about 400 milliamps, or thereabouts. Um, it's switching to 4.65 volts. Yeah, 410 milliamps, or alternating between that and about 390. So uh, we'll leave that on for a little while and see if the battery volts come up. If they do, I might just need to leave it on charge a lot longer. It could be that it's just charging at a very, very low rate. So, um, yep, let's just leave this go for a little while. We'll be back. All right, well, we've got it sitting on charge at the moment. So we're going to stick these tiny little probes in here and just have a quick check of our current battery volts under charge which is bumped up to 3.9 alternating 3.91 so she could be actually on charge it might just be that I have to leave it overnight because this charge is at uh, a very low current I'm kind of so used to things charging at like USB 3 and USB or USB C uh, charge rates um, at like you know two and three amps uh, so 400 milliamps might take a while to catch up. That being said, I do have a lot of stuff with single cells like this, and they charge at about the same rate. I would expect that after sort of three to five hours of charging, it should stay on for at least 30 seconds. So unless the voltage tolerance on this system is exceptionally high, which could be the wind bond chip, they might be just feeding battery voltage directly into the chip and not wondering or not worrying about regulation or any sort of inverter circuit, which looking at this, I'd say might be the case with the exception of maybe these two little coils here. So um, it could be that it's just shutting down because it's too low a voltage to run the chip, which could explain the low refresh rate and the variable clock rate. So anyway, we'll leave this go and see what happens. All right, while I'm waiting for this to come up, 
I'm going to do a quick little thing here. I'm going to mark which side is negative and which side is positive for the battery because I have no doubt I'm going to be inside this again one day doing something else. So I'm going to mark all that and I'm going to mark the negative side of the terminal here as well. Because I do this sort of stuff a lot. I tinker with things. All right. Let's keep going. And I think it was about 3.94 volts when I checked just a moment ago. All right. Now, one thing I have experienced in the past that might explain this, this little adapter that I'm using up on my charging station here, sometimes it, it removes the um, data connections and just supplies the power connections. Uh, and sometimes it creates a nice firm connection where some USB ports do not. Um, also, another thing I've seen in these, the cases also prevent the micro USB lead from making correct contact. And I've also seen some cases where these little connections are not on properly. Now, I note that it's starting to rain outside as well. But if we check this battery here, we're 3.99 volts now. Um, we're definitely coming up in charge. Things are charging. So I thought, while I've got it on the bench, we'll give it a test run here. And it fires up just nice. If we disconnect our charge lead, we reckon we've got three or four bars. So in the hour or so that I've been screwing around with this, it's actually charged and it's actually working. Um, so I think one of these connections has not been quite right. So I'm going to reassemble this. Um, button it up and then plug it into charge for a bit longer and see what happens. Either way, I think we've fixed whatever the problem was. It's kind of annoying when you're not entirely sure exactly what the problem is, but we found it anyway. So let's put this back together. Alright, well, it's all back together and uh, it works just fine now without the charger. And the SD card happens. I'm not quite sure if I can do anything to really show you what the view looks like in this but I can shove my hand behind it and I can tell you my hand is about 34 Celsius the back of my hand is usually slightly cooler but uh, it's telling me I'm a liar let's see if I can see these um, there are switches along here well these illuminated switches actually have incandescent bulbs in them my apprentice in the background is uh, helping as well but we can see the incandescent side of these and if I turn on this additional switch you should see that warm up. Let's move a little closer. We should be able to see that additional switch begin to warm up over time. I'm going to give it a few minutes and we'll be right back. All right, so we can see here these other three switches have been on for quite some time, but this one is just starting to warm up a little bit. And we can see here that my finger next to it is actually somewhat brighter. Um, as opposed to this one here. So we can probably tell that my finger's at 34 and the spot point there is probably about 33, 34. So that's about right for those little grain of wheat globes. Um, but I've covered them in the build on this whole panel as well. You'll see that in a previous video. But we can turn that off and we can see it start to cool off. This will be very useful in diagnosing things like overheating components and... Uh, uh, overloaded tracks on circuit boards and all sorts of things like that. So I'm, I've got some interesting things uh, planned for this, but uh, uh, conveniently this whole coronavirus thing, this will be handy for that too. We can take spot measurements from quite a distance and see hot spots on people. So um, I'm going to move along real quickly to these other switches. These ones have been on for a minute or two, um, which we can't really see. Oh, maybe just a little bit. They're just starting to come into a uh, thing, but those have globes much further back. They tend not to get as warm. So uh, it's not probably the greatest thermal imager, but it's still better than nothing. Um, and it certainly fits in my price range. So, yep, if you're prepared to uh, give your money to China and uh, on AliExpress and wait for it to arrive and do a little bit of minor investigation, oh, it's just shut down. I think it's got a timeout. Let's just check that. If you're willing to do a little bit of investigation and mucking around, uh, then this is probably worth your money. It wasn't intended to be a review video, just a repair one. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. And that is Tinkerman Mick sending me a message in the background about another video you'll see soon enough. Catch us next time.